What's going on, Swim fans? Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you five of the best drills for breaststroke. This is how you're gonna take your swimming to the next level. By focusing on your technique, that's how you're gonna improve day in and day out in the pool. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you an example workout and the strategy of that workout and incorporating these drills is how you're gonna swim faster breaststroke. So if you guys are new here, welcome to my Swim Pro. We help you take your swimming to the next level. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you join the community and subscribe and let us know in the comments what questions you might have. Let's go ahead and dive right on in. The first drill is streamline kick. Now streamline is the most fundamental body position in swimming. It's the most important word in your swimming vocabulary because every single stroke is foundationally built on streamline. Now in breaststroke specifically, because it's the slowest stroke, meaning you're moving the most inefficiently through the water, streamline is the most important thing. In breaststroke specifically as well, the kick is way more important than in the other strokes. So by focusing on your streamline and your kick, you're actually going to develop the best breaststroke stroke technique. Now what you do with streamline kick is you can do this in a few different variations. You can do streamline kick on your stomach. So you put your hands together, you're in a nice tight streamline and you're right on the surface level of the water. You can also do this on your back. You can also do this with a kickboard. I actually recommend doing streamline kick on your back. And the reason why you want to do that is because number one, you can breathe the entire time. So that's good. It also focuses on your flexibility, being able to keep your body flat and your arms up in streamline above your head. Sometimes people don't have the best flexibility and this really helps you focus on that. And you can also do this under the water and over the water. So I recommend doing breaststroke kick streamline on your back on the surface of the water. And when you're doing this, focus on keeping your knees underneath the surface of the water. It's really tempting to lift up your legs and have your heels come to your butt, but your knees come out of the water. Instead, focus on keeping your heels underneath the surface and your knees never come out of the water. The second thing you wanna focus on for streamline kick in breaststroke specifically is keeping your knees no wider than the width of your shoulders. Remember, water is 800 times more dense than air. So if you have your legs open up really far apart from each other, you're going to have a bigger kick, but that's going to be at the expense of more resistance. And so that's why it's really important to keep your kick narrow and keep your knees underneath the surface of the water and keep your eyes looking at the ceiling or the sky if you're in an outdoor pool. Now remember, this is the foundation, the breaststroke kick up, out, around, together. Some people call it the frog kick. You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure you're keeping your knees underneath the surface if you kick on your back. Now the second drill, still incorporates a lot of the kick focus. Sometimes people say breaststroke is 70 to 80% dominated by your kick, and I believe it. That's why the next drill is focused on your kick as well. When you do heel tag, you're basically gonna have your hands right at your side, and they're gonna be right over your bum, and you're actually going to tag your hands with your heels. So every kick, your, your heels are actually going to touch your hands. Now, if you're not flexible enough and you don't have that range of motion, that's what you're working towards. Same concept of keeping your kick narrow and compact with this drill. You can do it on your stomach. You can do this on your back. If you do it on your back, you can breathe the entire time. If you do this on your stomach, you actually time it so that you can take one breath for every single kick. So you'll take your breath and then you'll put your face back down. Remember to keep that body position in check. So if you're on your back, your eyes are looking right at the ceiling, right at the sky. If you're on your stomach, your eyes should be looking down as if you're in streamline, only your hands are gonna be at the surface. It's important to think about those knees and also flexibility starts to come into play. If you keep your kick narrow and your knees don't come outside your shoulders, it's gonna require you to have some more flexibility. And both of these drills really focus on developing that level of flexibility when it comes to your hips, your knees, and your ankles. Triple inflection points is what they call it. And when I say they, I'm talking about the general swimming community and human physiologists that talk about how the body can move both on land and in the water. That concludes drill number two. Let's go ahead and move into drill number three. This is a crowd favorite, two kicks and one 
pull. Now, this is a great drill for building rhythm. And what you're trying to focus on is your streamline, hold it together, two kicks underneath the surface of the water, then you pop up and you get one pull and a breath and you go back down a little bit deeper underwater than you normally would. Now, if you think about normal breaststroke, it's not that much different than this. In normal breaststroke, it's one kick, one pull. I always like to tell beginner swimmers to think in their head, pull, kick, glide. And if you can think about that, pull, kick, glide while you swim, it's gonna make it much easier to get the timing down. Even for a more advanced swimmer that is moving already very quickly in breaststroke, it can help to slow things down and be more patient with the stroke. So think to yourself, pull, kick, glide, and the breath happens while you're doing the pull. So you initiate the pull, you get your breath, you kick your hands forward, and you glide in streamline. You can do a few different variations of this drill, including three kicks and one pull, and you can also incorporate this into an actual set. So let's say you're doing a 100, and you're trying to develop your rhythm, you can alternate the first 25 two kick, one pull drill, and the second 25 can be breaststroke or freestyle. And there's a lot of different ways that you can mix in more breaststroke, but you're gonna do it as a drill, like two kicks, one pull, or three kicks, one pull, rather than the full stroke, because the full stroke is very exhausting. So doing two kick, one pull is a crowd favorite. I do it all the time. I love doing that drill. Now let's get onto a little bit more complicated drills that require a little bit more strength. They're not really more complicated. They just require a little bit more technique, training, and intensity. The first one is butterfly kick and breaststroke pull. Just as it sounds, you're gonna do a breaststroke pull and you're gonna use a dolphin motion instead of doing the breaststroke kick. This is focusing on rhythm. It's of course going to develop your pull because you no longer have the benefit of that powerful breaststroke kick. If you're naturally good at butterfly and not good at breaststroke, you're probably gonna be pretty fast at this drill. And for everyone else, you're probably not gonna be as fast. If you wear fins, this drill and the following drill are much, much easier. And this drill, I actually recommend having a pair of fins because it's gonna make you uh, have a much more powerful pull and dolphin kick working together rather than feeling a disconnection in your stroke. Also, on this drill, I highly recommend you focus on keeping your body level at the surface of the water. It's really, really tempting when you do this drill to dive down with the dolphin kicks. Instead, you should be focusing on driving your power forward on the surface level of the water. As you extend your hands forward, into the, into the water, into the other end of the pool, as I'm looking right at the camera, that is how you should imagine yourself moving forward. Don't dive down to the bottom of the pool because it's easier. It's gonna require more core strength to maintain that stability and drive your body forward rather than going up and down. Yes, there's an up and down motion, but for the drill, really focus on driving your speed forward to the other end of the pool. Same thing goes for the fifth drill here. When you're doing freestyle kick and breaststroke stroke pull, you're gonna have a lot more intensity, a lot more power, but don't go up and down. Drive your power forward. Now freestyle kick in particular is the highest intensity. If you're doing this drill correctly, your tempo is going to be fast and you're gonna be very, very exhausted. Having a pair of fins allows you to do this with much more efficiency and I don't recommend doing freestyle kick and breaststroke pull for anything more than 25s or 50s. Again, you can break this up with hundreds by doing 25 of this drill, 25 breaststroke, or 25 of the drill, 25 freestyle. A lot of ways you can break it apart, but I would recommend doing this drill, freestyle kick and breaststroke pull, when you have a lot of rest, a lot of energy, because if you don't apply full energy, you're not gonna do the drill right and it's not gonna help you increase your tempo and power in the full stroke. Let's go ahead and put this all together with my favorite drill progression for breaststroke. Now I have an entire workout, or the main set at least, and preset of a workout, but follow the progression because even if you don't do this set exactly as it's written on the board, by following the strategy, you're gonna understand what's important and how to get faster at breaststroke. Now the preset is a very simple 850s on the odds, you're gonna go breaststroke down, freestyle on the way back, and then on the evens, you're gonna go breaststroke the entire 50. What you're trying to do is just warm up the stroke and incorporate a little bit of that freestyle that I mentioned 
in other drills. So you're gonna alternate some breaststroke and some freestyle, but it's mostly breaststroke. Now, once you get that out of the way, we're gonna go 100 freestyle easy, we're gonna shake out the breaststroke, and then we're gonna come back to it for our drill progression, which is 825s breaststroke. Now, you can do this in 1025s. I actually like 825s a little bit more. 10 might work for you, you'll find out why. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start out on 25 number one, the first 25. You're just gonna swim in easy 25 breaststroke. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna count how many strokes you take. Ignore the pull out, so do a pull out, but don't count it as one of the strokes. Every time you breathe, count that as a stroke. Now in my example here, our swimmer is taking 10 strokes. You might take six, you might take 12. It doesn't really matter. Whatever your first number is, that's your baseline. That should be normal swimming speed, you're just cruising. On the second 25, you're gonna reduce that count by one. So if you took 10 on the first 25, you're gonna take nine. Then on the third 25, you're gonna reduce your stroke count yet again. What you're trying to do is you're trying to stretch out your stroke, focus on your timing and your efficiency. You can be stretching out your pull out and your stroke, and that's what it's gonna to take to be able to drop down even further. After four 25s, you're gonna be at your lowest number. If you can squeeze one more stroke out, you might carry that to 25 number five. So in this example, we went 10, nine, eight, seven, and then we were able to squeeze out another one down to six strokes. And then once you really max yourself out, which should take about four or five 25s, you're gonna build your way back up. You're gonna go seven strokes, then eight strokes, then nine strokes on the eighth 25, and you should feel like you're flying down the pool with maximum efficiency. This is a set that you should do with maybe no interval at all or ample rest. So for this level of swimmer that's taking about 10 strokes in a 25 meter pool, they should probably do this on the 50. That means eight 25s on the 50. You should feel like you're getting a good amount of rest, maybe the Minute is actually okay. If you're a more advanced swimmer, uh, like myself, I'll start anywhere from five or six strokes and work my way down to two strokes. I might wanna do this on the 40 second. So 825s on the 40, and I should have a roughly one-to-one -one work to rest ratio. So 20 seconds of swimming, 20 seconds of resting and just hanging out. Now this is the really important set to do before the groundwork of the actual pace swimming that we're about to do, because it really stretches stretches out your stroke and makes you much, much more efficient. Once you've got that baseline efficiency and you've really polished stretching it out and getting your timing down, you're gonna go 100 easy, shake out the breaststroke, we're gonna come back, we're gonna go 650s breaststroke at 200 pace plus one. So if you know your 200 pace, your 100 pace, that's great, you'll know exactly what that means. If you're not as familiar, no problem. Basically you're swimming at a relatively strong pace plus a second. So you know that you can go a little bit faster because you're gonna go faster in the next set, but you're not really killing yourself. So you're focusing on efficiency and speed and power, but you're not killing yourself. You go 100 easy freestyle, then we're gonna go 450s breaststroke at your 200 pace. So now we're going one second faster than we were on the last set, but we're only doing four of those. Then we go 100 easy, then we go 225s breaststroke at 200 pace minus one, so now you're going a second faster than you were on the last set. You do 100 easy, then you're gonna go 150 breaststroke at 200 pace minus two. So for my competitive swimmers who know what their 200 pace is, you're basically going as fast as possible at that 200 pace minus two would be basically your 100 pace or your 50 pace. So you're going as fast as you can go and that's how you're gonna finish the set. The other thing to mention that I skipped over is your interval. So as you progress through this set, you're gonna get more and more rest. So you start out on this example on the 105, then the 115, then the 130. So as you swim faster, you're getting more rest, but you also wanna keep an eye on your stroke count and make sure you're not spinning your wheels, meaning you're taking lots of strokes, but you're not going anywhere. Keep in mind, the 825 drill progression, where you really focus on stretching out your stroke, refining your timing, and really making your stroke as efficient as possible. If you like this workout, you're gonna love the progressions that we have in the My Swim Pro app. And even if you already have a coach and you're already training with someone else or with a group, you can use the My Swim Pro app as a training journal and you can record all the workouts and capture all your times with a smartwatch or you can fill them in yourself. 
The MySwim Pro app is available for free to download for iOS and Android and syncs with the Apple Watch and Garmin. We've got tons of training programs and you can personalize those programs 100% for you, so the app actually changes the intervals on the sets based on how fast you are. If that sounds interesting, make sure you give it a download. Also, make sure you join us in the My Swim Pro Facebook group. It's the biggest digital swimming community in the world, and I'll see you guys in there, and I'll comment on your progress. Let me know what questions you guys have down below, and I'll see you guys at the next video. Happy swimming, bye.